All right, I gotta think about what to paint with next. Some really fine acrylics would be super nice. Oh, maybe I can do that other thing with the stencil that I was thinking. Huh, I thought I put that away, but I must have forgotten. No big deal. Anyways, so I'm thinking we could probably do a... Okay, that's really weird. I thought I put that back in the... Ah, why are you holding a knife? Okay, this is crazy, right? Crayons do not come to life. Like, everybody knows this, right? I mean, I must be going out of my- Play with us, 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 you know you want to play with us. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, it was only a dream. We're gonna work with crayons today. <laughs> Yeah. Hello, my gorgeous, beautiful, wonderful queen bees. It is your girl, Amanda, the bus artist. Welcome back to my channel. So I raided my parents' basement the other day and I found a whole list of art supplies that I used to have when I was really, really little, including two big boxes of crayons. So I took this as a sign to do something a little different than I usually do on this channel. We are going to be making art using crayons and not just crayons, melted crayons. And not just melted crayons, melted crayons on a pop art background. Cannot wait to try this. So let's go ahead and get this party started. A few moments later. So first things first, I needed a design. I needed something cool and sleek and sexy, but I came up with a sketch that kind of worked and then I came up with a little traceable to see where I would be putting my crayon. I'm going to be painting in the outline of her silhouette here and I'm going to leave the rest of her head blank because we're going to go ahead and use the crayon to symbolize her hair. Now I know that melted crayons can be kind of difficult to work with in terms of their direction. I think I'm going to be using some painter's tape just to help me guide the lines according to where I want it to go pray for me. I have a pre-gessoed canvas, a sketch slash stencil, two boxes of crayons, black acrylic paint, a detail brush, a hot glue gun, a cup of warm water with a little bit of soap in it, painter's tape to help me guide my lines, some protective paper to make sure splatter from the crayon art does not make it onto my walls, myself, or the furniture, as well as a blow dryer. If you have a heat gun, that works just as well, but I don't have a heat gun because your girl ratchet, so we're going to be using a blow dryer. Your queen bee like to work with what you got. You know what I'm saying? So now that I have all my supplies in order, let's get to it. And just like that, we were off to the races. I took my stencil, I flipped it over, and I went ahead with my carbon pencil to make an outline of what it is I, I already made a drawing of. And then what I did was I took that paper, flipped it around so the carbon side was facing the canvas, and then I took a regular pencil and just went over the outline of my drawing. So this way the carbon will transfer very nicely onto my canvas. Now that I have added in my actual face, I'm just going to go ahead with some black acrylic paint and paint in the outline so it's nice and crisp. Here we go. And let me just say this girl's eyebrows are just fleek. Man, she just got the micro blade. Okay, so while that is drying, I'm gonna go ahead and pick out the crayon colors that I want to arrange for the hair. So what I did first, because this was a beautiful mess, I arranged all my colors according to the relative color categories, like yellow, red, purple, green, blue. And then I just arranged them according to the colors of the rainbow, Roy G. Biv, right? And then what I ended up doing was I needed to remove all the paper from the crayon, so I just took my cup full of water, threw all the crayons into their watery grave, and let them soak for probably about 30 minutes. Eventually. After some time, I was just super impatient, and I just wanted to see if I could start to peel off the paper off the crayons, and I had actually some really good luck peeling all the crayons from their packaging. Some of them slipped right off, while some others put up a fight. I've been sitting here for the past 15 minutes trying to deflower these crayons. They do not want to come out of their little clothes, let me tell you. This is becoming a big contender and taking up too much of Amanda's time category. It's getting hot in here, so take up all your clothes. This is what art is all about. And now the moment we have all been waiting for, let us start hot gluing these crayons onto our canvas. It took so long to get here. 
but I'm happy we're here. Let's go. As I began my quest for the Holy Grail, I decided to first lay down some painter's tape so that when I do put the crayons with the hot glue, the hot glue will not go onto the canvas itself and make a huge, ruddy mess. Little did I know that I was in for a huge mess to begin with, but anyways, it's all in the learning process. I proceeded to put all the crayons in order of their complementary colors, so I tried to put all the crayon colors next to each other that harmoniously made a nice blend together. So that way you would get like a really nice, cool looking set of colors. And I kind of just went ahead and thought about where the hair would flow and how I would place my crayons as such. So now that everything is glued, we are going to set blow dryer on this and well, we're gonna hope and pray that this works. I'm actually gonna turn this over because I wanna go according to how the hair wants to flow, which I want it to flow downwards. So with that being said, here we go. And within seconds of turning on this blow dryer, I already started noticing the crayon starting to melt. I was shook. Filled with the creative rage of a thousand suns, I decided to just go to town and tilt my canvas at various angles in order to get the best flow for my crayons. Holy smokes. Okay, so I got a little bit on here, so I wonder if I can wipe it off. Oh, I can. Oh, thank you, Lord. This actually looks really cool, and it's actually starting to, like, solidify pretty quickly. I think I might go back in with, like, other colors to just kind of play a little more. Yeah, I'm kind of liking what I see so far. Let's, uh, let's keep going. Y'all, I was hooked. Just watching these colors all blend and spill and melt together was like crack. It was so much fun and just a Addicting. I could have just done this all day long. In a matter of moments, I became one with the blow dryer and with the canvas, moving them both in congruency to make sure that the flow was where I wanted it to be. You can already see the paint splatters here are simply a work of art. It looks like the 90s threw up all over my desk and I'm not even mad about it. Okay, I'm gonna try something a little different this time. I'm just gonna do some spotting to make sure I get all the white areas covered. So we're gonna switch. Although controversial, this is another technique that I found amongst the YouTube community of melted crayon artists. You would take a piece of crayon, hold it over the blow dryer on a certain location, and then kind of like color in those areas with that melted part of the crayon and then you would just go ahead again with the blow dryer and just move those pieces around kind of like a watercolor the layers all play with one another so every time I apply more heat the layers from underneath will also start to melt once again and cause a flow start actually removing some stuff and see kind of how this turned out this actually came out like a lot more impressive than I thought it would very messy though I remove all these other crayons from here. This looks pretty neat. It is a little on the messy side, so I think what I'm gonna try to do is clean up some parts of this. I think if I just use the blow dryer, it should help me out a lot. And indeed it did. This was kind of like part two of the creation process here. So once I had everything removed, it was now time to kind of do a massive cleanup. So I used a palette knife to help me scratch off all the remaining wax from my hot glue gun, as well as any wax that was remaining from our crayons that we had glued onto our canvas. And then I just went back in with the blow dryer and played the flow game once again. And what was really, really cool about using crayons is that if it ever got onto a piece of the canvas that I did not want it to get to, I would just apply heat from the blow dryer over that area and then just wipe it with a towel and it came right off. I was amazed by this discovery because it helped really make the cleanup process so much cleaner. And as you can see here, I even took a piece of extra crayon that I had lying around to cover up more of the white areas. This is yet another little tip that I found from other crayon artists. Yeah. So after another little mini blowout, as well as a little touch-up session, this girl was ready for one more really cool addition. I looked at her hair and it reminded me of a galaxy sky, so I was like, let's make some stars. So basically got some titanium white paint, added some water to it, dipped a toothbrush into it, and then just flicked the bristles of the toothbrush onto the canvas itself. And you make these really nice little tiny dots of white that make it look like stars. 
Well, that was an interesting experience. We got to experiment with crayons, we got to play with blow dryers, we got to get our fingers real nice and hot and almost burn ourselves. When it comes to putting on the crayons onto your canvas and you don't want the hot glue to stick onto your canvas, use some form of painter's tape to make sure that the wax does not get onto your canvas, otherwise you will have to do that part over again. For those parts that we couldn't reach with the crayons, you can actually pinpoint with an actual crayon while pointing your blow dryer straight at it and the color will actually melt onto the canvas and you can move it around as you see fit. That was really cool and hands-on and something that I also really really enjoyed with this process was the blending. This was kind of like a watercolor where any layer that you place on top is going to mix with the layer you put on the bottom with your crayon art. So make sure you find complementary colors that go very very well together so that you get a really cool blend and a harmonious mix of color. All in all will I do melted crayon art again? Yes, but it is the biggest mess that I have ever made in all of my messdom. It took a very very long time to set up to actually do the thing and make sure nothing splattered all over the place and to clean up. If you're looking to do a project that's gonna last you three to four hours and keep you real busy and have a lot of fun, hey, do melted crayon art. That is totally up to you. All in all, I am really impressed with this. I actually really like how this came out and I kind of just liked how minimal it is with the color. I'm pretty happy with it. And you get nice textured edges, which is really nice. So my queen bees, what do you think of melted crayon art? Have you done it before? Would you ever do it? Comment below, let me know. I always want to hear from you, my darling, gorgeous, beautiful, wonderful queen bees. And if you like the pop art that you see here and want to learn how I actually do it, you can actually sign up for my free pop art course called Turn Any Image Into a Work of Pop Art, where I walk you through step by step how I go ahead, look at an image and transpose it onto any work surface, like a canvas or paper, and turn it into a work of pop art. It's a great learning experience and a really great way to get your feet wet with pop art. So be sure to check that out in the description below. And if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a like and to subscribe to my channel. Hit that like button, you know what to do, so that you can see more fun art videos and challenges and other zany art things from me to you in the future. All right, everyone, love yourselves and always have fun with your art. See you all next time. Bye.